Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Now about two and a half weeks ago, I unboxed this Sonstar C5 3D printer and initially I had good impressions with it, but also some concerns. So over these two and a half weeks, I thoroughly tested it and today I'm gonna give you my opinion about all its in and outs. But first I wanna thank Gearbest for sending over this printer. You can check it out at the link below. Now at the moment this printer is only 220 US dollars which for a multi-material 3D printer with all the features that this one has is really impressive. And saying that my hopes weren't too high is kind of an understatement. Just the pure hardware cost of all the motors and the hot ends and the electronics and everything that if you build it yourself is almost gonna come to the same price already. So there isn't much room for any development or anything else. So I wasn't very surprised when the assembly process didn't take the, on the website advertised 10 minutes, but turned more into like three, four hours. But I didn't mind that too much. It was kind of a pain in the butt to assemble, but after it is assembled, it looks kind of good. The reason that it took so much longer is for all the manufacturing intolerances. And that's kind of the theme with this printer. As for this price point, of course, they have to cheap out wherever they can. But when I tried my first print, which I sliced myself because the stuff on the SD card didn't really work, I was really surprised. I 3D printed the Banshee and it was almost as good as the one that I got from my CR10 3D printer, which is almost twice the cost. So that got my hopes up real high and I was like ready to recommend this printer to everybody. And after my experience with the Banshee was so good, I immediately tried multi-material and well, the great experiences ended there. There isn't really a profile for Cura included on the SD card, at least no one that I got working. And Cura is more designed for the Ultimaker multi-material printers. So it took quite a lot of tweaking to get the settings just right. So I have my print profile linked down in the description and it's not perfect, I'm still working on it so I might be updating it, but it's certainly much better than starting from scratch. One of my main issues was the print bed. And while it is a nice heated bed that gets up to temperatures really fast, it's only an aluminum surface and that's not ideal for printing. They had blue tape on there and that works okay, but I don't really that like using that, so I tried using glue stick and with a lot of glue sticks it works but I still had some problems so I cranked up the temperature a bit higher to like 55 to 60 degrees celsius and I also had to print with a brim so that the prints stick to the platform and not fall away. But with all of these measures in place it's actually almost hard to get it off of there. But still if you want to improve the printer greatly just add the thin piece of glass on the print pad and you're going to be much happier. And then my other issue was that the hot end just isn't great. On the one hand, it's just a rather weak heating element in there, so getting it up to temperature takes forever. And when the fan's on and blowing on it, it's like almost impossible to heat up at all. But the even bigger issue is that the hot end is leaking. That means that every once in a while, there's a drop of plastic that drops down on your part, or if you're lucky, on the prime tower. But not only creates that an ugly spot on the part, it also creates a bump in the part where you hot thing can get caught on and then you're skipping steps with your motors. And that's why some of my prints didn't come out very well. Now, that might be an issue that's just with this specific printer or with all of them. I can try that as my sample size is just one, but I'm gonna maybe investigate that a bit more in the future and see if I can fix that. So let's talk about some smaller stuff. The interface of the printer is really good. It's using the same of open source software that all the other cheaper printers are using and that's a really good thing. The interface is good, the knob feels good, there's a nice display, it reads the SD card. I have no issues there. There also is all the bed labeling included, at least on the box and there's a sensor and I installed it but I never got it working. But with all the other issues that are there, like that's your least of your worst, so I wouldn't even bother installing the auto bed leveling sensor. 
There also is no cover for the electronics, but that's totally excusable and you can just print one yourself. And one other thing that I thought and initially that might be a big problem, but in practice in printing hasn't even been that big of a deal, is the very flimsy construction. I mentioned that in my initial unboxing already that the part here rocks back and forth, the print bed is completely loose and there's no way to really tighten it. But surprisingly that didn't affect print quality all that much. The thing with the bed is just the problem that leveling it is really hard, especially since the aluminium surface isn't completely flat. So getting the first layer nice and even is a bit harder than with most other printers. I also had an issue with the Y end stop and it not being adjustable at all. And so my Y end was almost an inch or about two and a half centimeters off the edge of the pl print platform. So that's not a big deal, just in software you have to either work against that or you're gonna have to build some sort of activator that the end stop switch gets hit at the right point. There should be some way to adjust it, but I didn't find any. For the Z axis that works perfectly. Now there also is a version of this printer which is about 20 bucks cheaper that doesn't have dual extrusion. And with all the trouble that I went through, I'm gonna say if you aren't planning on using dual extrusion very much and just want a cheap, decent printer, then you can easily save those 20 bucks and put them towards the spool of filament. But if you want to try multiple material, it's not that much more expensive and with some tinkering, you're gonna get it working. Now let's come to the conclusion. The main good selling part of this printer is its price. At this price point, you aren't getting any other dual extrusion 3D printer so if you are willing to tinker a bit with it, it's your ideal entry point. And also, if you just use it for single extrusion, you can get for it for even cheaper and it's a really decent printer. For that price point, of course. Also, the print resolution is quite decent. And there's a nice heater pad that, if you add a glass plate, is perfectly usable and it gets up the temperature really quick and also quite hot. So you might even be able to get ABS working. And the not so good part definitely is the hot end. That's where they cheaped out the most and I wish that it would get a bit hotter. That's like the main thing and the leaking also is a big problem but that might be fixable or not an issue on all the printers, I don't know. But that creates quite a few problems. And the software support for multi-material printing is really poor. So if you aren't a tinkerer, this printer maybe isn't for you. But if you like playing around with stuff and building your own and don't have that much cash, this printer is a really good recommendation. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe and check out all the links down in the description. I have affiliate links there, I have links to other channels, social media, everything. Just check it out there. Thanks for watching and until next time.